In this video, we're discussing the bones of the skull, primarily the bones that are associated with the temporal mandibular joint or act as attachments for muscles that act on the temporal mandibular joint. We're starting with an anterior view. We can clearly see the frontal bone, maxilla, and mandible, including parts of the zygomatic bone. Here we can see the temporal fossa. Despite the name, it's actually comprised of four different bones. It's part of the frontal bone, parietal bone, temporal bone, and sphenoid bone. And it serves as the superior attachment for the temporalis muscle. This is the zygomatic arch, also comprised of two bones. The anterior portion is made of the zygomatic bone, and the posterior portion of the zygomatic arch is actually the temporal bone. This will actually serve as a site of attachment for the masseter muscle. This is a lateral view of the skull. We can actually see the temporal fossa much better, which we'll talk about again later on. We can see the zygomatic arch, a good view of the mandible, and the maxilla. This is the temporal mandibular joint. It's comprised of the condyles of the mandible and the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. When opening at the temporal mandibular joint, it's actually depression and anterior translation of the mandible together. During closing of the jaw at the TMJ, it is elevation and posterior translation of the mandible at the TMJ. This is the ramus of the mandible. It's essentially the bridge that connects the condyle and coronoid process to the angle and body of the mandible. We have several muscles that attach here, including parts of temporalis, masseter, and medial pterygoid. This is the coronoid process. Part of the masseter and temporalis both attach in this area. And this is the angle of the mandible. So it's just where the uh, parts of the bone change angles. So it's a very descriptive name. And parts of the masseter will also attach in this area. This is the area of the alveolar processes of the mandible and the alveolar processes of the maxilla. These are the ridges that house the roots of the teeth. This is a lateral view of the temporal fossa. We can clearly see the four bones that make up the fossa. Superiorly and anteriorly, we have part of the frontal bone. Superiorly and posteriorly, we have parts of the parietal bone. Inferiorly, we have the temporal bone. And then kind of anterior, inferiorly, we have the sphenoid bone. This is the zygomatic arch. And again, anteriorly, we can see it is actually part of the zygomatic bone. Posteriorly, it is part of the temporal bone. And again, this serves as the primary superior attachment for the masseter muscle. This is another lateral view of the bones of the skull. We can clearly see the maxilla, sphenoid, and temporal bone. In this picture, they've actually cut off the zygomatic arch so we can see in deeper. If we look at the bottom part of the sphenoid, we can see the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone, and that serves as an attachment for the pterygoid muscles.